hi guys hope you all doing well and welcome back to our channel and in this video I'm going to talk about Azure information protection now since this will be the first video of the entire series that I'm going to create for Azure information protection my key focus here is to make you guys logically understand that why any enterprise would need a data protection solution like Azure information protection and for that I'm going to talk about three fundamental basics the first one is what is data classification then I'm going to talk about rights management service and the last thing that I'm going to talk about will be data protection now the reason behind covering these basic fundamentals is Azure information protection in a nutshell is a cloud service that's been offered by Microsoft and that is a combination of data classification as well as rights management service now from a definition perspective if we will try to understand these two terms or if we try to address these two terms data classification is the process of classifying documents or emails depending upon the sensitive or generic information that it contains whereas rights management service means the process of aligning different permission to a document depending upon the user who is trying to access that document let me give you an example for rights management service let's say i am a user and i'm creating a document since i am the author of the document or i am the owner of the document i should get full permission but when i share that document with some other user he or she should only get read only permission this is just one example that can be achieved by most of the solutions which offer rights management service capability but let's understand both of these terms more conceptually so that it's very easy for us to understand or to relate why any enterprise needs a solution like azure information protection data classification in a nutshell means the ability to classify documents so think about a scenario wherein me as a user creating different type of documents on a daily basis to complete my daily tasks but from a user perspective i may not know under which condition a document is qualified to be addressed as a sensitive document in cases let's say i'm creating an excel sheet or i'm sending an email that contains my pii or my pci information now these two terms are actually in line toward a data classification and data sensitivity info type very specific to microsoft as well as as a generic standard wherein pii stands for personally identifiable information that includes your contact number your email your home address but that doesn't mean that if any document contains your email that is qualified or that can be addressed as a PII document because there is a specific sequence in which this information should exist or there is a number of occurrence that should be there in a document then a document is qualified to be addressed as PII document and PCI here stands for payment card industry data security standard this is more over related to bank information likewise account number or credit card number so if I am drafting an email wherein I have mentioned my credit card number that's actually a PCI information that's actually a sensitive information that I'm going to share either with any internal user or external user but if your enterprise doesn't have any classification solution implemented then there is no classification available and your enterprise would not even know that how many sensitive documents are getting generated on a daily basis now what if i say that with the help of azure information protection or azure information protection is a solution that can let your user know that the email that they are going to send contains a sensitive information and that has to be classified now getting classification done org wide 
is really important because you should know what kind of sensitive information is getting generated on a daily basis. What is the amount of sensitive information that is getting on a daily basis? Now, the document is classified. Azure Information Protection has recommended the user to use a particular classification and the resultant value now is classified document. Everything is in place. But the fact is that still there is a user intervention required. That means still the user has the ability to either refuse or accept that particular suggestion which AIP has given to that particular user. Taking this to one another level and that is you can actually automate this process with AIP. So that means as a user when I am including credit card number on an email and the moment I will click on send that email will get automatically classified. Now since if you follow this process, the classification is done on real time and all the analytics are there so that you can actually track that this much sensitive documents are created or depending upon different classification, you can actually track down how the data is getting generated in your enterprise. So this is exactly data classification service and which is very important for you to fundamentally understand what is the purpose of AIP? Now let's talk about the other node, which is a rights management service. Think about a scenario where as a user, I generated an email or I created a document wherein I have included PII or PCI information. With the help of AIP, the document is classified now to be a sensitive document. But what if I send that email or I share that document with some other user and when the other user tries to access that document, he will get read only permission. Now, this part of rights management service is actually done by Azure RMS. Now, likewise, we have AD RMS, which has its own limit and for which there's a lot of groundwork that has to be done. Similarly, we have Azure RMS as well. And Azure RMS is way much better as compared to AD RMS. And I will be cover covering this comparison as well in our videos that I'm going to create in future. So in a nutshell, Azure Information Protection is the combination of data classification as well as a rights management service wherein the part of protection that is getting aligned with documents is actually done by azure rms now when you will start reading the documentation of azure information protection this is a common definition that you will find which is with azure information protection you can classify and protect documents and emails now, I have tried to create the story behind this particular statement or behind this definition, which is technically available on Microsoft article, so that you guys can get logical understanding of both these components and how they work in conjunction to give you a particular solution. Now, the fact is that how classification and protection are binded with each other and which entity makes a document classified that is called label so label is a sort of data that gets embedded or encoded with the document and then your document is classified the identities get binded so it doesn't matter wherever your document goes the protection remains same so in the next video now I'm going to let you know guys how exactly Azure Information Protection works in a nutshell when both of these two technologies are combined. So let's talk about a quick summary of what all we have discussed in this video. We have discussed about what is Azure Information Protection, some of the very basics which are related to Azure Information Protection, likewise data classification, and rights management service and why it is important for any enterprise to protect data what is exactly data protection so that the users who are not authorized to access a particular document 
the access should be blocked or the respective users should get required permissions only. In the next video, I'm going to talk about how Azure information protection works in a nutshell. If you guys have learned anything new, please feel free to subscribe. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time.